Thank you again for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today we have Talisman, the board game. But we have a special edition of that. We have Batman, the Super Villains edition, brought to you by DC Comics. This game is for ages 13 plus, and it's for two to six players. Batman is an iconic comic book hero. And honestly, I love this character. He's uh, my all-time favorite comic book character. Uh, this was bought on sale for $29.99, so I was very happy to pick this up. Uh, let's turn this around. It says Talisman, Batman Super Villains Edition. Escape Arkham Asylum and become the most notorious Batman super villain of all time. Take on the role of Gotham City's greatest criminals as you fight to reach the center of Arkham Asylum in Batman Talisman. Roll your way to victory as the Joker, Harley Quinn, the Riddler, Bane, Poison Ivy, and more. Your path to becoming ruler of the criminal underworld consists of many twists and turns. Battle Gotham City's finest heroes as you search for the Arkham Asylum keycard that will provide access to the security control room where you can shut down the system and free all of the supervillains. The first supervillain to make it to the center of the board and beat Batman himself wins the game and their freedom. You got your table of contents over here. Again, this is game is for ages 13 plus. It takes 90 or longer to play, 90 minutes or more to play the game, and it's for two to six players. It's brought to you by Games Workshop, DC, and Warner Brothers, and USopoly. And this was released. Let's see if we got a date here somewhere. Yep, it was released by USopoly in 2019. And Talisman is a trademark of Games Workshop. All right, pretty awesome there. If you go to gamesworkshop.com, you'll get all the information you'd ever need about Talisman, the board game, and of course, this variant edition of it. So, let us uh, crack this bad boy open and see what kind of goodness we have on the inside. It's a medium-sized box. It's not huge. It's got a lot of good stuff inside. Oh, and we start off right off the bat with the rule book. So, let's take a look at the Super Villains Edition. All right, so it has an introduction. The object of the game is to sneak, fight, search your way through Arkham Asylum and be the first of the villains to reach the security control room at the top of the guard tower. Once there, you must subdue Batman and turn off all the security systems. The first player to do this will free all of the villains and become the leader of Gotham City's underworld and will win the game. In order to reach the end, you'll need to collect various items, gain followers, and improve your strength and cunning. Most importantly, you will need to locate a security key card to unlock the security control room. Without one of these powerful cards, there is no hope of completing your task. You give up to six players and talks about the components. Then we talk about key components and concept overview. The game board, the counter cards, feet cards, Batman card and figure, purchase cards, alignment, security key cards, coins, six-sided dice, strength and cunning, Stat dials, health, your fate, villain character cards and figures, your character setup, health tracker, cunning tracker, strength tracker, there's your joker, fate tokens, coin, object cards, and follower cards. It gives you an example of the game board, how it gets set up, how it gets right there, the cards that you need, tokens that you need, game setup right there, again, it's a pretty large board, so it takes up this game pretty much takes up your entire table. So just uh, be aware of that that it is a very large board. All right, so it's got three levels. It's basically got three levels to it. Um, the game turn. So each player's turn consists of two parts in this order. You have movement, and then you have the encounter. So movement: player rolls a die and moves his character that number of spaces around the board. Characters may move clockwise or counterclockwise in their current region, but may not double back in a single movement. If the movement roll is a one, also resolve movement for Batman. See below. Encounters. Once a character has finished their move, they must encounter either the space or a character in the space where they land. At the end of a character's turn, play, play passes clockwise, clockwise to the player to the left. Movement in the tower region. Turning back. Batman movement. Encounters. Encountering another character. Encountering a space. Combat. Resolving combat versus enemies, more than one enemy, infamy. Combat between two characters, 
And there's an example of combat right there for you. And then evading objects, object carrying limits, weapons and armor, followers, ditching followers and objects, feats, using feats, additional rules, deranged, security key cards and purchase cards, limited resources, followers, losing a turn, character death and inherited items, Carmine Fal Falcone's cell, having and using cards, crossing between the first and second floor, the guard post, security door, control room entrance, security control room, lock picks and guard keys, and then you have alternative rules, rules for traditional play, alternative play rules, ditching cards before encounters, talisman bloodbath, no inheritance, strength and cunning, no starting bonus. Based on the fourth edition of Talisman, brought to you by Games Workshop. Okay. And then on the back, back cover, you have uh, key components and concepts overview and tells you kind of where to go. Got some great artwork from Arkham Asylum and, of course, Batman. And you have the encounter sequence. So here are, is a flow chart, which explains to you the entire process of the game. So there you have it. So it's good to have that. So there is your rule book. I'm going to put the rule book aside for a second because I'm going to show you the game board, which again is a very, very large game board. So, and it's quite heavy as well. So pull that out first. I'm going to make some room here for us. And then we can keep, keep the unboxing going, flowing. So just pulling stuff off my table. So again, I don't want to break the board. That's the number one thing. When you have a big game board, you got to be careful of not popping it. So you've got down here, we're going to start down here. We've got Don Carmine Fal Falcone's common room, prison yard, common room. You have the narrow passage. You have the bathroom. You have the chapel. You have an open cell, boiler room, corridor, office, uh, open cell. You have the exam room, an open cell. So again, you can see immediately that you have the, where you're trying to get to, follow the arrows. Again, this is your second level of the game board, and outside is your so outside is your first level. So you have your blue level, you have your gray level, and then you have the yellow level. So that's the first two parts of the board. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to close that up there. I'm going to pop this open here so I can show you some more of this. So again, I don't want to pop it. So there's your kitchen, your corridor. Your psychiatrist's office, a regular office. Up there it says electrical room. Then when we turn it around this way a little bit. You got open cell, you got a destroyed room, you got a corridor. You've got the dark room, you've got the open cell, you've got the supply closet. Again, you have an open cell there. Then we flip over here. Looks like you have the morgue over here. You got a corrupt guard security door this is again on your second level you've got your infirmary common room your office again you have the psychiatrist's office then up top you have the electrical room here then it says something entrance right there again we can take a look at this a little bit and now every room i'll use this one as the example every room has some writing underneath so let's just take a look at this a security door going up if you are crossing to the third floor, do not draw a card. Instead, you must first use cunning to pick the lock or strength to force it. Choose which ability you are using and roll two dice. Infirmary. Doctor, heal, you, uh, heal up to your starting health value at the cost of one coin each. If you have the medic or EMT, heal up to two health for free. Again, common room, it says any enemy that you fight here, add two to their attack rolls. All right, so as you can tell, everything has, uh, when you land on space, there's something different that you have to do. All right, so where are we at here now? So let's see, did we look at this part yet? I don't believe so, no. So that's orderly station, the bathroom, stairs going up, stairs going down, control room, locker room, security control room. I think that's where you want to get to. You have the hallway, then we flip it onto this side. Again, trying not to pop anything. Again, you got your locker room, hallway. You have patrolled corridor, blind spot, corridor, office. Okay, so I want to open this gently. 
I believe I've shown you every last portion of this map. I believe I have. Okay, and see, and then it swings out this way. Yep. So, so there you have it. So there is your complete board. You can move it around here. I'm going to turn it a little bit so you can see it going this direction. But as you can tell, it is a ginormous, enormous board, which is really, really cool. So there it is. There is your game board. Okay. And again, you have your rule book. We'll throw that up here again. Okay, let us continue with the unboxing. So now you saw the board and you saw the rule book. Let us continue moving forward. We have some character cards, which you'll start next. Of course, we have the main man himself. We have Batman. Again, this is again, you're not playing Batman in this game. That's the number one thing you have to remember. And again, that great, I believe that's Jay Lee. Um, artwork. Yeah. Um, okay. And so you have Batman, first floor, second floor, guard tower and controller. So these are the strengths. So on the first floor is when you could knock him out. Obviously, when you get to the control room where he's the strongest, he's got 12 strength and 12 cunning, which is a lot. If you defeat Batman in combat, roll one die and gain that benefit. Fate, coin, health, strength, cunning, feet. Start at the guard post. There it is. That's Batman. Again. Again, you are not playing. You're playing the villain. You're not playing him. So Batman is going to try. You have to defeat Batman to get out of Arkham Asylum. But you can be some of these characters. You could be Clayface. So each card is laid out exactly the same. So let me just show you real quick. You've got the name of the character. You have your strength, your cunning, your fate, your coin, and your health. Gives you a little background here. It says add your cunning value to your strength during combat. You may not use any weapon or armor during combat. Of course, you've got awesome artwork right there. Assign, uh, alignment is righteous. Starts at the supply closet. Now you flip that card over, it's deranged. You suffer from delirium for three turns. Leave all your objects, followers, and coins on the space where you became deranged. While you are deranged, you have one strength and cunning one. Move one space per turn, no die roll. Life, retain your character's health. Fate, retain your character's fate. Cunning, you cannot add the additional strength and cunning points of your character. You cannot perform or gain feats through, you, though you may keep the ones you had. When you return to normal, your character will be as before, minus objects, followers, bribe, money, fate, and health lost while deranged. Alignment righteous, start at the supply closet. So that tells you Clayface. Then you have Raish al Ghul. Again, strength, cunning, fate. Again, you have stat lines. You have the information about him. Righteous, he starts the location of where they start. In the back, it tells you, again, what deranged means. So it looks like the deranged... The numbers may be a little bit different, but the information on the back is identical. Again, he start, it gives you where each character's starting point is. So start the dark room and start the black line. So that's Ra's al Ghul, and that's Clayface. We also have Poison Ivy. You can be Harley Quinn. The Joker's daughter. That's a newer villain. You can be Mr. Freeze. You can be, obviously, the Joker. You can be Bane. Two-Face. The Riddler. Scarecrow. And the Penguin. So you have a lot of villains to choose from. And the idea is that when one gets knocked out, you just you just you're not out of the game. You just pick another character. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You have eleven, twelve characters to choose from. Twelve villains to choose from, which is a lot. And of course, you have the Batman character, which is played independently. So there you go. That's your characters. We also have. We also have a bunch. Of, we also have a bunch of dials for. We have a bunch of. Oops, we have a bunch of dials for the game as well. 
I'll show you one of these dials. You see all of them. So let's put those over here like, like so. And as you can tell, you have the dials that move like this. Okay. I'll see this keeps track of your strength. That's your strength dial. And that goes to see what's the highest. It goes up to nine, I guess is the, uh, that's six. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, so 12 is the largest of strength that you can have. I guess 12 is the most amount of cunning that you can have. And your health, 12 is the highest you can have. But each, you know, so you can have up to six players. Each person gets one of these boards. Those things, obviously you can add them in. And this is one of those things that you use that are for the inside there. So you have a couple extra of those too. But that is your your uh, dials for keeping track of your character's uh, different ability levels, which is health, cunning, and strength. So you get six of those. Put that over there. I didn't put one together, so I just wanted to show you what that. So yeah, it just pops in like that. Okay. So that's just an example of what it looks like. You have these, it looks like coins. You got a full bag, all in our identical, but I'll show you the coin up close. It's the two faced coin, which has Lady Liberty on one side and the scarred side on the other. So that's some coins that you get, and you get a bag full of those. You also get some tokens that look like this, which look like Batman tokens. I'm not exactly sure. You get a whole bunch and they come in a whole bunch of different colors. I'll show you one that pops a little bit more. So you got eight. Front and back are the same. So you got, looks like it goes up to 15. So you got some tens. Whoop. You got some tens, like I said. You got some tens. You got an eight. You got a nine. 15. Looks like 15 is the highest. You got a four. Got two. Again, sixes, 14. So you got a whole bunch of these tokens like that look like that. And they're all the same. Only thing different is that they have different colors, different numbers, but they're identical. Front and backs are the same. There's your, again, there's a 13, which is pink. So you get a whole bunch of these type of tokens. Ranging from one to 15. those all back in the bag. There you go. There's your tokens there. Again, front and back are identical. Numbers 1 through 15. There you go. You also get some plastic tokens. So this says chaotic. Oh. Chaotic and says righteous. Again, righteous and chaotic. So you get four of these, righteous and chaotic. So you get four of those, so it looks like this. Righteous. So you get, like I said, you get four of those. And you get a bag full of these little coins here. It says talisman on it. Yep. And it looks like one. And number one underneath it. And they're all the same. And you get a nice collection of those coins as well. Again, this is a, basically, a, if you think about, if you want to con compare this to anything, this is a dungeon crawler using Batman and his arch villains. Really, that's what this is. So, we also have decks of cards. This is your encounter deck. So, you, also you get a uh, tremendous amount of these cards. So, let's just take a look at some of them so you get an idea. Oh. And here's what you're going to have. So I'm assuming, again, I never played this game. Just recently, I actually picked it up this weekend. So you have different levels. So you have level one. It tells you. So obviously, uh, these are used on your first level of the board. Again, your first level is considered the blue. Hold up. It's the blue level, first level. Second level is the gray. And the third is up towards the watchtower, which is, which is the yellow. So you got your blue level one, gray level two, and you have your yellow, which is level three. So, 
Just gonna try to get that. We have a lot of cards for level one. Get your one set, then you have your two set. And then you get your three set. So let's start off with number one, which is, it seems like the majority of the cards, the cards get lesser and lesser. So for, I've watched a couple of box uh, videos about um, how to play this game. And again, this is a dungeon crawler, so they want you to do a lot of searching. So you spend a lot of time searching for items, because if you try to take Batman on with just your characters, just like in the comic books or any of the TV shows, you know, Batman will beat, them, beat their ass down and throw them back into Arkham Asylum and lock them back in a cell. So in this game, you want to find items that will help you prepare to really take out Batman when you get to the final battle. And that's the idea. And again, your other, this is not really a cooperative game. Because, uh, again, the villains don't really, naturally, they don't work together as a team. But if you defeat Batman, then you're considered iconic and uh, you become the leader of everybody. So, let's take a look what it says here. It says, Talon, follower, add one to your strength, add one to your cunning. Inmate. So, these are the followers that you're adding in that can help you improve your, improve your stats. Commissioner Gordon, enemy hero. Commissioner Gordon is investigating this area. He will remain here until he is defeated. Okay, and I'll see there's a number on the bottom. Maybe that's the cost of the card, or it could be what you need to roll to defeat him. Not sure. Then we have the ventriloquist and Scarface. You have an inmate again. You have the medic, straight jacket, security key card, loot bag, security key card, doctor, uh, uh, utility belt. Again, here it says an event. If you are righteous evil, you gain. If you are righteous evil, you gain one health. If you are chaotic evil, you lose one health. There is no effect if you are indifferent. Okay, and that will be told. It tells you right there. It says alignment is righteous. So it'll tell you here um, whether that card works for you or not. Uh, utility belt plus one strength. You get uh, extra bribe money. Bronze tiger, another villain. Guard, bribe money. Deadshot, another villain. Guards, keys, power out, uh, bribe money. Security raid, it's an event. Again, object, bribe money. You got, yep. So you got plant extracts, legendary object from Poison Ivy. Uh, Lincoln March, uh, bribe money, bribe money. You get the general, just inmate, bribe money. Riot shield, spoiler, enemy hero, uh, black mask. Tweedledee and Tweedledum, Two-Face, Lucky Coin, The Batarang, The Riddler Kane, uh, Red Hood, uh, Library Cart, uh, Officer, Baseball Bat, so you get the general lockpick, patrol schedule, Penguin's Umbrella, and all these things are going to help you too, obviously. You're going to increase your rep, you're going to get your more um, people to help you out, some um, your patience that you can use to again make you stronger man bats a follower swat officer robin i'll see he's going to fight you he, he's going to stay in whatever where you he lands so if you get robin right there he's going to stay there so you get robin robin's card stays there like that and when he goes through there i'll have to defeat him to win so his strength is an eight you got to beat him up you got to beat him up you got to get eight wounds on him you got the lazarus pit you got jervis tech you've got police radio inmate Dr. Leslie Tompkins, and then you have an open vent. So the open vent seems like there's a challenge on there. You've got two dice there. It says, please, the open vent will remain here for the rest of the game. You may pass through if you wish. Roll one die to determine where you crawl through to. The boiler room, the supply closet, exam room, balcony, cone cell, psychiatrist's office, or the security door. All right. So that's your encounter deck, first deck. For, that's for your level one, the blue level. Then you got level two. Again, all the fronts are the same. Another Joker's lapel flower, Duella's half moon blade, hostage, group of guards. And it says here barricaded door, extra money, riot officer, Harvey Bullock, uh, officer, smoke filled room, place, uh, Daltrons, Dalotrons. You got Warden Agatha Zorbatos. You have Contraband Sale, Batgirl, Court of Owls, you have SWAT Officer, Fire Alarm, Architect, Killer Croc, Helmet, uh, Clue Master. Let's see what he says for him. Clue Master. It's an event. 
you encounter Clue Master while exploring Arkham Asylum. If you are chaotic, he will gain one cunning. If you are righteous or indifferent, he converts you to chaotic. Okay. Police Patrol, Officer, Fitness Room, Dr. Hugo Strange. Dr. Hugo Strange will remain in this space for the rest of the game. He will give one feat per visit to each righteous evil character landing here, if their cunning allows. You have Hush. You have Professor Pig. Fear Toxin. Storage Closet. Officer. Uh, raving Inmate. You have a Bribe Money. And you have a SWAT Officer. And you have a closet. The closest. Uh, yeah, closet. It's a place. There you go. And you have your smallest deck, which is your encounter deck for the third floor. I'll see that's where you're going to run into Batman, and he's the strongest. You've got Hallucination. Uh, hallucination. It's an event. Guard. SWAT officer. Solomon Grundy, who is obviously a massively powerful character. Gas mask. Bulletproof vest. EMT. Riot officer. Victim. Zoss. Uh, research lab and medical kit. There you go. So those are your encounter cards that you have. You also have some additional cards here, which you have a security key card. You have feats. Not what you walk around on, but feats, things that you can accomplish. And then you have your purchases. So let's take a look at your purchases. Hi, Rosie. How are you today? Oh, you see Rosie in the corner of the camera. Hi, Rosie. We love you. Thanks for stopping by, getting a little snack. So there you go, you got our purchases. Uh, so let's flip this over, things that you can purchase. So you can purchase a bulletproof vest. You can purchase a riot shield. So let's see what the riot shield does. It says object armor. If you are defeated in strength combat and just lost a health, roll one die. If you roll a five or six, the riot shield protected you and you did not lose that health though you still lost the combat, okay? You have a helmet, guard's keys, baseball bat, loot bag, helmet, loot bag, patrol schedule, more baseball bat, lock pick, you have four of those. So that's your purchase cards. You have your security key cards legendary object you may only enter their control room at the top of arkham asylum tower if you have a security key card all right so you must have a key card to get to the top floor so you're going to be searching for this so that's good again the rule book will explain how you shuffle your cards whether all these go together i'm assuming that one two and three all get put aside feet well, the fronts are the same. Rolling over here, we have security passage. Let's see what it says. Use on your turn, instead of rolling the die for movement, move to any other space in the same region. This feat cannot be used in the guard tower. Okay. Rage, stealth, med kit, blitz, uh, disorient, rage, change of plans, outsmart, straight jacket, contraband, intervene, secret passage, misled, Med kit again, outsmart again, foresight, hypnosis, blockade, scale the outer war, uh, uh, the outer wall, change of plans, high alert, pickpocket, and call the guards. These are all different kinds of feats. Okay, it says here. Yep. Okay, we reread that. All right. So those are your feet cards. Let's see what else we get in here. All right. Getting down to as they say. This is the inside box, just so you see what that looks like also. Got a nice room for everything. And we get down to the nitty gritty here. The things that people really want to see, which are the cool game specific dice. You get six of them. Oh, look at that roll, not too bad. Three sixes, I'll take that all day of the week. I'll take that every day of the week and twice on Sunday, and of course, You've got the numbers, number one is the Batman insignia, and it goes two, three, four, five, and six. And you get six of those die. And as you can tell, they roll pretty nicely. They're your typical GW-sized dice. And 
we have a plethora of figures. And they're very, very nice sculpts, as you would expect from Games Workshop. So you got your Batman figure. Now, again, if you have additional Batman figures from any other game system that you want to use for this game, you could do that too. So if you, even if you have hero clicks and you have them based, you can use them for this as well. So you, you don't even have to bother painting them up if you choose not to. But these are have a lot of detail on them, and then we paint them very, very nicely. Hit them with primer, and you're good to go. That's Batman. Uh, who is this here now? This is Joker's daughter, it looks like. Yep. She's got some sort of sword. Yep. Okay. You've got yourself the penguin. Looks more like the Danny DeVito penguin. Just a couple pot. Okay. This is Mr. Freeze. Usually he has the helmet on, but he doesn't seem to have the helmet on this time. Okay. Of course, you got Harley Quinn with her hammer. Again, these are great sculpts. Really, really impressive. Really nice. You have Pamela Isley, Poison Ivy, who usually teams up with Harley Quinn. You have the Riddler, Edward Nigma. All right. You have Clayface. I'm not mistaken as Boston Brand, if I'm not mistaken. That's who he was. So that's Clayface there. Not so thrilled about how, how his face looks. I've seen a little bit better. I've seen better sculpts of Clayface before. But again, it's a it's a beautiful sculpt. I'm just being a little picky on right now. He's one of the larger characters. Of course, then you have Bane. The one who breaks the bat. Yeah, the, the thing that kept popping in my mind when I saw this game was um, if you ever read any of the... Okay, there's your Joker. If you ever read the Batman story on Nightfall, where all the characters are out, Bane gets all the characters, breaks them out of Arkham Asylum, and just makes Batman get weaker and weaker and weaker. And eventually, he follows him and meets him in his cave and breaks his bat. It took place in the 90s. You have Two-Face, obviously, throwing his coin up in the air. Hardy Dent, Two-Face, yep. Then we have, who's this person here? Who is that? Scarecrow? Yeah, it's Scarecrow, I believe that's a Scarecrow. There's a lot of different versions of him, so I'm gonna assume that's Scarecrow. That's I'm assuming who that is. And you have Raish Al Ghul. Of course, for those who don't know, Raish is the one who tried now, don't don't pay attention to the Batman movies, um, uh, the Dark Knight movies. Don't don't pay attention to that the backstory because it's all wrong. So, Ray Shagul is the one who wants Batman to. Once he dies, he wants Batman to marry his daughter Talia, and he wants him to take over um, his his evil organization. So anyway, that's a little background history about the characters of Batman. Uh, I'll give you that. Again, I'm really looking forward to diving into this game here. My kids love uh, DC villains, and of course they love Batman, just as I do. So this is going to be the perfect game for us. Anyway, so that shows everything that's included, including this extra bag here. This is everything that's included in the game. And this also concludes our unboxing of Talisman, Batman Super Villains Edition. So there's your Talisman, Super Villains Edition, brought to you by Games Workshop and DC Comics. It's for ages 13 plus, two to six players, and it takes about 90 plus minutes to complete the whole game. So as always, thank you so much for joining us for this unboxing video. It's truly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, you can always give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Also, you can always hit that subscribe button. This way you're kept up to date as to any time we release any new content to the page. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be well, enjoy the remainder of your day, and we'll catch you on the next unboxing video.